Hey guys, and welcome to another brand new video. In this video, we actually have some pretty good news to go and share in regards to God of War Ragnarok. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys are kind of hoping and wishing that this game's going to be actually good, and so far, I'm going to do a little bit of a deep dive in terms of all the reviews and kind of give my thoughts on everything I've seen kind of collectively from all the big news organizations and the early PR people, and so far, everything has been utterly fantastic. And as well, we also want to go and highlight and showcase up some of the God of War Ragnarok, kind of, you know, just graphics options and everything else tied on in, but one of the biggest things out here is that this game is apparently being fantastic. Now, just for me, in terms of a content creator, reviewer, and someone who likes to actually look at this type of stuff, I'm going to highlight a lot of the good, because I, I have been seeing a lot, and I mean a lot of really good, 10 out of 10s, fantastic, lovely game, and then maybe at some point throughout the next few days, we'll have another highlight of kind of some more of a more critique, and a little bit more of a hardcore review as well, because I've been slowly seeing those kind of popping up, up, and I feel like those are always very, very nice to look at. But, I want to first highlight the very good, and give some claps over here to Sony themselves, because a lot of these initial reviews have been fantastic. So make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on and for the PS5 giveaway going on itself. We have the PS5, Xbox, etc, etc. And as well, the Twitter and Twitch room down below if you guys want to follow. And let's go and show you guys something that hopefully will make a lot of you guys excited. So we've actually had a lot of tweets, a lot of big promotion and everything else too, and a lot of big reviews coming out. So I believe as of today, the initial review embargo came out only a few hours ago. We had the initial, I think, maybe first few hours for God of War that went very nice and very good. Part two of this would also be now, this is like the proper full game review, where people had a chance to really do a deep dive and really experience and kind of go a little bit farther than the first few hours. And as you guys can go and see off of this list over here, IGN, 10 out of 10. Games Hub, 10 out of 10. PSU, 10 out of 10. Push Square, 10 out of 10. VGC, 10 out of 10. Gaming Nexus, 10 out of 10. Gaming Trend, 10 out of 10. We're seeing loads upon loads upon loads of 10 out of 10. This game is fantastic reviews, and this has been phenomenal to go and see. Now, the very first and foremost, with pretty much everything out here, take everything with a grain of salt. Now, I'm not going to say God of War is bad. Everything we've been seeing so far is, bits, is fantastic. We're going to go and kind of showcase and highlight some of these initial reviews. But always remember, I'm one of those people that no game's ever a 10 out of 10. And I don't trust people who ever say it's a 10 out of 10. Now, what could a game be like a nice 9.5 out of 10? Yes, but something can always be done better. I, to my day, I, I've been around almost 30 years old. I'm 28 years old. I, to this day, I've never played a 10 out of 10 game. I've played some fantastic games, and I've had games in my mind that are the best game I've ever played, but even the best game I've ever had a chance to experience could have still been better. So these are a little bit, I'm a little bit skeptical on this one, but everything we so far, to be honest, has been very, very good. So a good example over here is we're seeing articles over here from even the Washington Post, where the God of War Ragnarok improves on its predecessor in every single way. And that's fantastic to hear because God of War 2018 was a phenomenal good game. Now, this is fantastic. So basically saying this is the best told story in video games in 2022. When it comes to gameplay, it is an iterative, a sequel to the 2018 PlayStation 4 smash hit, but that doesn't tell the whole story. In fact, the whole story is full of surprises, and that's why, once again, we keep pushing, be careful on spoilers, be careful on Twitter, be careful on Twitch, or wherever it may be, or even on reviews, please be careful. I'm going to try my best to never go and put up a spoiler for you guys. Ragnarok is also one of the rare stories in any medium where the second experience is better than the first, rewarding the audience's knowledge and attention to details. As soon as the credits roll, you may be immediately tempted to start over and empowered with knowledge on how the plot beats unfold and appreciated characters and story arcs that you pay off big time in the end. So basically, we're hearing sto stories and thoughts that basically the gameplay story is fantastic. Because it's great because a lot of people are saying there's even like a nice post game where there's even more adventure after the game ends. And there's like a big kind of push in terms of side stuff. So a lot of folks are saying there's a lot of big side content that's able to be done. Now in prior games there are things like the Valkyries you had to go and destroy, things to explore. Or maybe if you didn't do like a deep dive in a certain area or environment you can kind of go back with it. But this one, a lot of these things are coming out big. So they're even pushing a lot with this side content. With a side content that could equal the quest found in CD Projekt Red's semi-annual 2015 hit, The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt. And that's a big game to go and bargain with. So many other big budget developers have tried to hit that peak, but I can confidently say that uh, Santa Monica Studio has surpassed that bar. And basically said that these side quests are rewarding, actually worth being done, and that's always one of my biggest issues when it comes to games, is that sometimes you have a side quest that's not really worth it. So they also say the main story is just a triumph. It's good. It's great. The side quests also are all for like the beaten path, but they're also some of the biggest battles. So it's not like, a, you know, you kind of have the main story, but sometimes in games, maybe even like Elden Ring is a good example, doing those side stories, you could actually have a harder boss or a funner boss than actually the main story side. 
I think Elden Ring is a good example where you have awesome bosses that were like Melina and all these other various big ones. The final boss was great, but there was a lot of hidden bosses too, and this kind of ties into the God of War side. So they go and note that the game kind of felt off very narrow and linear, but they did also go and say true that basically that's not as true and as the game kind of goes and progresses. Where they say like later on it's a lot more open, a lot more of just various world to go explore, and they're also saying this is easily the biggest God of War to date, which is also awesome to hear. Like, I'm feeling this, I'm liking this. And the players were either dive into Ragnarok, they don't need to finish the first game to enjoy the second, though the context makes for a richer experience. So even if the recap of these stories so far at the menu comes across as a bit confusing for those who didn't play the previous chapter, the early game provides also a lot of background and plot, which is also good just for brand new users or someone who just never played the prior games, whatever that might go and be. So basically a tourist over here too as well, you guys can see this type of stuff. This is like, it's cool. Like, it's just, I like it. They're kind of continuing the story, which is kind of duh, it's a sequel, but a lot of these comments have been going very nice. So Santa Monica Studio also took to heart many of the gameplay nitpicks of the otherwise celebrated 2018 game. That game didn't have much in the way of a spectacular set piece enemy fights, so Ragnarok has multiple screen filling, giant sized monsters too to engage in extravagant combat scenarios. And that was one of the biggest issues I had is that there was cool fights, but I want to see like planet, I mean not planet size, but I want to see huge fights with gods and these giant monsters and lores. I want to see that being big. And that's a big thing they've actually pushed now into the game itself. Now that's not really a big spoiler to you as well. It just kind of goes to show that they're making the game bigger, better, longer, fine tuned, and continuing all the good aspects of the prior game. They also even have a chance to say that Kratos feels like it's old self, as welcome, long way to return, and they have more flourish in terms of animations, incorporating weapons, and everything out. This is going good. Where they have like a big thrill to use the axe, to punch back an enemy, to use the shield, and whatever you guys might go and be. You also have the iconic Blades of Chaos, which kind of made their appearance in the very tail end of the last game from the original trilogy, which were introduced late in the 2018 game. Now, part of his starting kit, the developers design combat arenas and levels around the weapon's ability to hook and fling the hero across great distances and up vertical spaces. So basically, we're just seeing all these big updates and all these big changes and making the game seem a little bit cooler at the end of the day, too, as well. So basically, he's like, you know, he's trying to get like his uh, internal struggles and conflict and everything and everything tied on in with this, too, as well. Now, a lot of these other comments are going great, and they're also being put over here, too, on top of this. Where they're like, how do you even follow the greatest games of all time? Sony Santa Monica finds itself in a situation not dissimilar to when Francis Ford Coppola created the sequel to his mob movie masterpiece, The Godfather. And these people are all saying that this is all great, that the writing, the performances, the music are all exceptional, bringing this expansive Norse tapestry to life, but also holds your heart in one hand with his elegantly told story, its crunching bonus, and the other in the fantastically ferocious combat. It all binds together to forge a monumental a action epic that adds yet another impressive landmark to the video game landscape. So everything is great. They're saying the story is great, as we mentioned in the prior articles and even this one, that the gameplay is great, the animations are great, the boss fights are great, the open world is great, the storytelling is great, the graphics are great, and everything also, even loading times, the PS5 especially, has also been fantastic. And this is why I love seeing this, because everyone's saying this game is good. And they're saying it's special. It's finally grand conclusion of Kratos' Norse, uh, Norse saga. And they're saying there's twists, there's turns, like everything all in the story itself. That like the characters actually have reason to feel these pains and the reason to get these emotions and the reason to feel everything all tied together. And a lot of people are saying that these are all 10 out of 10 games. And it's adding to the really rare list of the IGN 10 out of 10, where they have games, you know, like you have all the Pokemon originally back in the day and it's usually a pretty rare 10 out of 10 now these are like oh once again i don't think many games even the games on this list are a 10 out of 10 and that's i think one of the biggest struggle the biggest struggle out here is that i don't think a game is a 10 out of 10 but the fact that these are getting such high reviews and everyone's saying this is fantastic and everything it's great to go and see now, I just want to say uh, there is always that critique, and there should be more critiques. Like, I, I don't want everyone to keep on saying this game's amazing. It could be amazing, but I want to know why it could potentially not be amazing, too, as well. So I'm going to do a deeper dive in a separate video. But one of the big things you're saying, like, this isn't like a DLC, like some games are. They Apparently, the game is around uh, just in case no one... If you don't want to be spoiled, like, skip. Like, you can end the video here and have a good day. But they also just mentioned, too, where it's like, like a 40-hour game. And for a single-player game, that's huge. That's phenomenal. That's great. And I love to see that. Like, it, it makes me so happy to see. So, good. This is just good stuff. I love seeing this. I love seeing the vibe. I love seeing everything. This is fantastic. So, I want to hear your thoughts. 
what do you get? I kind of rambled a little bit, but everything we've seen so far is it's good. It's worth buying. You're going to have fun playing it. The story is good. Animation is good. Gameplay is good. Cutscenes are good. Everything is good. And it's also a good continuation of a game that a lot of people loved back in the day too as well. So I want to hear your thoughts down below. I want to hear your comments down below. Are you guys going to be picking up God of War? Do you, do, do you pick up any bit of this crazy me rambling and talking about these Forbes articles to you? Because I'm excited, especially with how in-depth all these other various things, such as like graphics options and everything else, accessibility options, and everything tied in between. This is making me happy to go and see. I love this. I think it's fantastic. And at the end of the day, I'm going to probably go buy it. <laughs> I'm excited to go and play it and stream it. So give me your thoughts and comments down below. Make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on. As well for the brand new PlayStation 5 giveaway. We have the Amazon links, Target links, and everything else too as well tied on in. And I appreciate you guys all so much for watching here in the first place.